Okay, well, welcome to, um, to Ponoon with Parents. Um, my name is Brian. I'm the associate pastor at um, Inspire Church of Skagit Valley, all the way in Cedar Valley, Washington. If you don't know about Cedar Valley, that is in Skagit County. So um, I'm excited to be with you guys today and, and just to be able to, to share a little bit um, about Ponoon with Parents. Um, before we begin, I just want to encourage you, that you're going to, those are like full labs today, I think, full different labs, or, or three labs, another one tomorrow, and you're going to hear lots of ideas, lots of thoughts, and I know for me, sometimes those ideas and thoughts can be overwhelming. Sometimes it's like you have a, an information overload. Um, so I would encourage you after, after each lab, maybe just, just write down one, one thought that really stands out to you, or one, one action step that stands out to you. If you, if you try to do everything you hear, um, it's just going to be a bad idea, and you won't be able to accomplish all those things. So I, w- I would just encourage you with that. Um, but as, as you know, there's been a, a lot written about partnering with parents. There's been a lot of, lot of discussed. You probably have read a lot of different things about that. It's, it's certainly a, a trend in children's and family ministry, isn't it? Uh, professor Dick Gruber, he's a children's ministry professor at Valley Forge Christian College. He says, the challenge facing the children's leader in today's ministry is twofold. It's one of supporting parents' ministry with their own children in the home while inspiring them to serve the children in the church. Well, there I just want to talk a little bit about, about culture, establishing that culture in the church, and, um, and how that relates uh, to partnering with parents. Um, also in the back there, Pastor Michael, he's going to share for a few minutes as well. Um, he's from Life Point Church in Vancouver, and they did a great event just a, a couple of months ago. And he's going to share kind of how that event happened and, and give you a, a great resource as well. Uh, but culture, we can, we can define culture as the prevailing attitudes which dictate actions, behavior, and habits. Culture is, is really simply how we do things, right? Uh, unfortunately, culture is, is, for most churches, for most children's and family ministries, it's not really created on purpose. It just kind of evolves over times and, and, and just kind of how things ha- have been kind of create their own culture. For me, it's a, it's a big step in creating that, that culture of, of pointing appearance that, that needs to be strategic and, purpose, and purposeful. I lived in in Grants Pass, Oregon, for about 10 years. I was a, a children's pastor down there, and, and Grants Pass is, is a beautiful place to live right in southern Oregon, and it's also the home of, of Dutch Brothers Coffee. Um, you, you, may be, you may have ever had Dutch Brothers before, okay? You may have seen them. They, had, they, were, they were highlighted in an under, undercover boss show a, show a couple years ago. But Dutch Brothers has a very, very distinct culture. I've been to, to many... Um, Many stands just in Grants Pass itself. It's like 12 stands, so you know you can go 12 feet. It's kind of like Starbucks in Seattle. Uh, but but when you go to any any Dutch Brothers Coffee, you you'll see some different things. You you'll see very young Broistas. They call them Broistas, not Budistas. That's just kind of kind of how they roll there. You'll hear loud music. Uh, the coffee is very sweet, not like sweet like sweet, but like really sweet tasting coffee. So if you don't like sweet coffee, it's probably not the place for you. It's a really, really kid-friendly place as well. Almost all of the stands I've been to have been alike. And that just doesn't happen, does it? It's, it's a purpose, and, and they, they've created that culture even when they, they have a different interview process where they interview like, like 10 people at a time in a room, and they're almost like competing against each other, and they're kind of watching um, that, that personality. So that, that distinct, for Dutch Brothers, that distinct culture is, is established before someone even starts working. And it's, to them, it's probably almost important, maybe even more important than the coffee that, that they serve. Um, now, your children's ministry and, and family ministry, your culture isn't, isn't more important than the message of the gospel. Uh, but if you want to, to partner with parents in, in spiritual training, it's something that, that has to be worked at. We have to d- establish um, that, that culture. Reggie Joyner in, in the book Think Orange says this, Family ministry should not be another program to add to your list of programs. It should be the filter you use to create and evaluate what you do to influence children and teenagers. So it's not just another night of the week. It's not just 
a program is it, it's everything. Um, to create culture and to create that culture, partnering with parents, I believe that 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 we have to do something about it. Um, I think all of us would would say that we value that. We we believe that that parents should should take on that role as spiritual leaders in the home. Um, I don't, I don't think I've ever talked to a lead pastor who would say they don't value that. Uh, but we have to put action to it. We have to do something about that. So changing culture for, for many of us may, may require a, a shift in strategy, a shift in priorities, and quite possibly a, a shift in calendar. Simply saying that in calendar, pr uh, strategy, priorities, and calendar. So simply saying that the parents are the spiritual leaders is a great start, but it doesn't necessarily change the culture that, w that we have at our church. Last week, I, I hosted a, a pyramid at my church, uh, and, and it wasn't a pyramid just to, just to, to give the calendar events or, the, or to give information, but it was about establishing that culture. It was about encouraging parents to take on take on that role to, to be spiritual leaders. In fact, um, Dan Matu in the Fusion book that, that uh, Glenn Kobe just mentioned, he, he wrote a great chapter on, on a parent meeting, and I think that workshop is loyal today, so, so I would encourage you to check that out. So it'll be a really good lab. So let's talk about strategy for a minute. Strategy is, is a method or plan to bring, up, bring about a desired future. I'm coaching my, my daughter's um, youth basketball team. She's, she's 10 years old, and, and she is a baller. She is very, very competitive and athletic, and probably in about two years, she'll be able to destroy me and, and have more skills than, than I have ever, ever had. Um, but we, we play in a fairly competitive league, so it, it'll take some strategy. Um, because I know my, my desired outcome is a win, and my daughter definitely wants a win because she's very, very competitive. So if we want to have that desired outcome of a win uh, as a team, we have to have a plan. We have to have a strategy. We just can't show up um, tomorrow when we have our games and just, just hope that good things happen, and we'll just you know, do whatever you want out of the goals, and good luck to you. So, so we have strategies with defense, with his own defense, with, with strategies on, on what plays we run on offense. And if we want, in our churches, a desired outcome, we need to have a plan. We need to have, have some sort of, of strategy. You know, we need to be asking ourselves the questions, you know, what do we want to accomplish? What, what does partnering with parents look like to us and in our environment? And how will we know if we have accomplished this? Um, those aren't easy answers, questions, excuse me, those aren't easy questions to answers. Um, I don't have all those ans answers to you, for you. What, what happens at Inspiral Church or what happens at Life Point in Vancouver, what happens here or, or in your church is different. All of, all of our, our DNA of our churches are different. Our culture is different. So it's going to um, take some time to develop your strategy. It's going to take some time getting together with people and, and mapping things out and, and walking through that. A great place to start is, is from the instructions that Moses gave us or gave the Israelites in Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7. This is probably a very familiar verse to many of you. It says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. This is a, the, those verses are, are, are great um, kind of key verses when we talk about partnering with, with, with parents. Uh, Moses didn't say, um, hey guys, you just need to talk about my commandments on, on Sunday morning from, from 10 to 12. He, he didn't say, you know, we need to make sure that we do, do 90 minutes of, of family devotions every, every night um, before we go to bed. He was just, he was encouraging to, to look at, at those daily rhythms of life, whether it's um, at, at dinner time or driving your kids to school or or, or putting them in bed tonight and looking for opportunities um, to, to talk to your kids about, about things, things of faith. You may, you may want, as, as I would maybe want, uh, our families um, to, you know, church to have devotions with our families um, maybe just once a week. Um, not all of our families would do that. Not all my families came to my, my parent meeting last week. I wish they would have all been there. Uh, 
but, but setting goals for yourself. Wouldn't it be great if even 50% of our families did that? 50% of families were, were having weekly, weekly devotions. Um, so, so part of this shift in strategy is, is thinking, instead of primarily about your kids, you're thinking primarily about, about families. You're, think, you're thinking families first, and how, how can you partner with them? How can you encourage them? The basic question may be, may be simply said that, how can we equip the, the generations by using family as a primary influence of kids' spiritual growth? There's lots of, lots of different things that the churches do, that we do, that they, that you probably do. I'm just going to uh, highlight a couple of those things that, that maybe, and maybe one of these things you've never thought of, and maybe this is a good action step for you to, th to consider adding one of these pieces as, as your overall strategy when, when you look at partnering with parents. First one is, is just to encourage family devotions. And to encourage that, it, it may require some training. You know, I, I believe that a lot of a lot of parents they want to do that, but they just don't know how, or they don't don't make it a priority. So it may be providing um, on a, on a Sunday on on your website or, or in social media just ideas for parents and how they how they can lead the family with those. Engage in a shared family experience. I've I've done some of these over the years where it's just a, a time maybe it's a forty five minute time on a. On a Sunday night when we, we were in Grants Pass, we did these once a month. It was the, the first Sunday night in the month, and it was just a 40 my, 45 minute time where we, where we worshiped together, and we had, we had skits, and we, we introduced the, the theme for that month, and we also gave out resources for the parents to use that month. So, so maybe there's looking for opportunities to bring people together. If your church is like my church, uh, we'll, we'll separate a lot of parents who in this building, kids, kids in this building. So... That's one strategy. Establishing parental visits in children's programming. Maybe, maybe probably your strategy is com coming up a way to, to get parents in, into the, the, the children's area, the children's environment, um, to, to just maybe hang out, to see what's going, to see what, what, what's being taught, to encourage, encourage them to be a part of that. That could be, you know, quarterly family days, or that could be this is the, the fifth and sixth grade Parents' Day to be in here, however that works for you. Enrich parents through resourcing them. Providing resources is, is, is a great thing. I know there's a, there's a church in Mount Boone, City Point, where they have, um, they have kind of a, a resource wall where they have three or four books uh, that they encourage parents to read that, that help with, with this, with, with spiritual training. Uh, you know, using social media is a great way to resource them. Maybe those 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 take-homes, those monthly things, those ways, to, to whatever ways you can get things in hands of, of the parents is a great part of the strategy. Enlist parents in entry-level ministry with their children. Uh, maybe you have lots of parents that are just really unengaged. Maybe they, maybe even you, you might consider them just spiritually uninterested as families. So maybe those ways that they can they can get engaged at a very entry-level where it's uh, you're, you're doing you're doing Rubio floats one day, and you just ask some parents that are pretty unengaged if they could do that, um, just to get them involved in, in, in some way. Special events are great. Well, it's a, you know, it's a Halloween party or even, even camps and different different events where, where parents can can volunteer for just a very short amount of time. Educate parents in training their children. You know, th this could be a, a, a parent meeting like we had last week in my church. It could be a, a workshop. Uh, we had a um, a teaching series that we did last spring called Modern Family, and it was it was focused on, on parenting. Could be lots of different ways. And the last one I'll, I'll mention is is called Celebrating Milestones. And there's a book, and, and it's on your, the back of that page that you have, but called uh, Brian Haynes wrote this book called Shift: What It Takes to to Finally Reach Families Today. And in it in this book, he shows seven different milestones in, in a person's um, faith journey. And, and he, he believes that those are good opportunities for us to, to partner with parents and, and to celebrate those things as, as families. So the, the seven that, that, that he, he mentions, are, uh, the first one is a, is a birth of a baby. So many of us have, have experienced baby dedications or we've seen baby dedications. Uh, the second one is, is a faith commitment. So, so leading your child into saving relationship with Jesus. Wouldn't it be great if, 
if all the parents were leading their kids, uh, you know, personally to, to Jesus, what what a great privilege that is as a parent. A third one is is preparing for adolescence, preparing your child to to embrace their identity as Christ as they as they move into that that really important part of life. Another one is is a commitment to purity, so maybe a little bit older, maybe more of a of an eighth grader type thing, leading your ch- teenager to live a life of biblical purity. Another one is a kind of, of finishing, getting close to high school's passage to adulthood, you know, equipping a, a, a young person just, just to even know God more. Um, high school graduation is, a, is another milestone that he recognizes. And then life in Christ was just kind of living as a, as a follower of Jesus through adulthood. And in his book, and, and I am encourage it, to, to grab it and lead it. He just mentions just different things where they, they do different classes or workshops or, or, and they just encourage th- those milestones to celebrate that and encourage parents to be a part of, of each of those places. So, you, you, so your desired future, whether that's, that's shared family experiences or celebrating milestones or encouraging family devotions should uh, should not just be in the mind of, of us as, as a key leaders, but, but those are things we need to write down and we need to share. And, and for, for culture to really happen, it's not just, it doesn't happen by one person. It needs to establish uh, throughout the leadership. So as part of your strategy, you will, you will, you will likely need to, to make, a, make a shift in priorities, um, both maybe personally and, and church-wide. You know, personally, I know as I, as I, as I work to be more intentional about, about how I live my life, I, I need to take the time to ask myself, you know, where do I want to go? Who, what do I want to become? What do, what do I want to accomplish? And as I, as I ask those hard questions, and if I'm honest with myself, those, those things in my life that I have to change, I have to make a, a shift in, in prior priorities. Um, some parents in your, in your ministry may say they don't have the time to disciple their children, or at least that's the way many of them may, may feel. Um, according to a recent research in the field of family ministry, half of all church-involved parents have simply resigned themselves to the notion that their families are too busy to engage in consistent practices of family discipleship. Life is busy, isn't it? We have we have three kids and it is it is busy, and and it's easy to to put those things on the back burner and, and and not highlight those things. For many of us, you know, children's sports, school activities, those things are good things. My kids play sports. I want my kids to be successful in school. But but for many of our parents, those things are are, are put with higher importance sometimes be, before before training our kids spiritually. Nearly one, one third of parents agree that they were willing to do whatever it takes for the children to succeed in certain sports or academics. Man, I wish I was the number in our churches, right? That one third or, or half of our, our parents were willing to do whatever it takes for our kids to su- succeed spiritually. Now, many, many of our, our parents do believe that, w- that there's more to life than sports and academics. Uh, they, the problem is that I believe doesn't always make it to the day-to-day rhythms of life. So h- how, can, how can we, as leaders, as pastors, help parents rethink that and, and to focus and make a shift in the priorities? You know, we may need to look at ourselves first. I know if I, if I would go home today and I, I'd look at my refrigerator in my kitchen, it's a very cluttered mess. I have my, you know, my daughter's basketball schedule is on there. My, my wife's um, work schedule is on there. There's this, this file for a skate night that the school is doing in a couple of weeks. Um, there's, some, there's probably some report codes going up today because they, they, they came. Hopefully, hopefully they're good enough to go up on the fridge. Um, there's probably some things that are really outdated because they're so cluttered because we didn't notice that this thing has been on, on the refridge, on the refrigerator for, for three months now. But that refrigerator sometimes reminds me of, of churches too, in the in the church calendar and in, in, in the church bulletin. I don't know how, how your church is, but I remember those those a time that I had I think full meetings during the evening each week. 
um, that makes life really busy. And th those, those families that have that, if, the, if we have families that are so involved in church with the giving back four times a week, and, and we need to realize that, that families have m more in their life than church, right? Those sports and those dance styles and, and those music lessons, and hey, they may actually volunteer someplace else uh, other than church as well. So if we're only giving you know, families one, two, three nights at home a week, that limits the time that they, they can be, be, be the church at home to, to their kids. So, so when ministry calendars become too crowded, and, and those we have because of weekly small groups and we're, we're competing maybe with our volunteers with, with, other, with other programs, eventually families become so busy during church, they have no time remains for them to be the church in their homes and in their communities. So, so what are we to do as churches? We may need to take a shift in our priorities. You know, if, if we want to, to seriously partner with parents, we want parents to, to, to lead the, the kids spiritually, we may have to do less so the parents have time to do more. That's not an easy thing to do, right? Because we ha those are those hard questions. So that the shift entails doing less so the parents can do more, streamlining, combining, and even cutting activities so that families can become free to join God's mission in their households and their communities. So why don't you just take a moment and just, just think about, about your personal calendar, your, your church calendar. You know, how, how busy are we? You know, are there things on, on our church calendars that are just there because we've always done them? Are there, are there means that are just like, you know, that's, that's a great mean, but just we're not going anywhere with that? Are we, are we allowing time for, for families to, to encourage their kids spiritually? Are we allowing time on the calendar? Do we have things on the calendar that are about partnering with parents? Are we offering different things? Um, on, on your calendar, you may want to, um, the last part on, on your notes there says, creating this shift in strategy and priorities will naturally create a shift in your calendar. Uh, maybe for you, that, that shift is, is creating a, an annual parent mean. Maybe you've never had a parent mean, but a parent mean not just, again, for information, but to encourage them to, to lead um, their, their kids spiritually. Maybe for you, it's, it's starting an, an occasional um, family night, a night, maybe it's a shared family experience night, or a night that's very, that's, that's very strategic and pus purposeful. Or maybe it's counseling a program, or an activity, or an event that just, that's just taking time and really isn't accomplishing the, the overall strategy of, of your ministry. Or maybe it's beginning a, a parenting class or a workshop, where that's a, a one, once a year thing, or a well, maybe it's even a small group that you connect with them. Well, partnering with parents is, is a really big deal, isn't it? And, it, and it's, it's not just a trend. It's, it's something that, that we as leaders uh, just need to think about and try to develop some, some strategy. Reggie Joyner says, as long as churches do only what churches are doing, they will get only the results they are presently getting. And as long as families do what families are doing, they will produce only the outcomes they are presently producing. To experience a different outcome, we have to embrace a different strategy. Hey, I want to invite um, Pastor Michael. He's going to share for just a moment. Michael was our youth pastor at Insidual, and then this last year he's, he's received Christ as a Savior, and he's, he's become an, a children's pastor in Vancouver. So he's going to just share about a great event that they did at their church. Uh, we, can, we can put the mic down. We don't have to. a lot of change, um, just ministering to teenagers and now kids is obviously different, but I went from a city of 15,000 now to being in Vancouver, Portland area of 150,000 people, and you know, a church of 150 to now leading a children's ministry of 240 kids is like big change, and um, kids are awesome. I, I had youth camping, we had this youth camping for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, the children, I, I remember Bunk Monday, my first time being put at Bunk Monday, it was just and um, so I, I had response. 
response station set up. Kids could write on a whiteboard and respond with musical worship and write a letter to Jesus. I was so excited. And, and for these kids in the back, they were writing precious notes to God and, and praying, like, I want my grandma to be healed or, and I want my dog to come back or whatever. It was just a great discussion. And then uh, perusing the table afterwards was my first real children's ministry experience as I looked at what they were writing and did that. And so uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I can go about that much today because we're here today. Uh, but as I got there at life point, um, a parent came to church. And part of the parenting perspective is to teach the good things. And so it was for all of our family life. So it was for kids from birth through uh, 25 years old, which is pretty young adult now. And so we did it for them to kick off our Wednesday night program because we started for kids. Uh, but we did it to teach them. We had a dinner. We had a main session with the speaker. And then we broke off into some breakout groups. And so I brought some of our uh, resource guys we talked about that night. I think actually we had about 25 kids. So Um, so it was it was a really fun night. Uh, we had uh, parents come. We fed them dinner, which is a spiritual thing to do. And then our lead pastor, we kind of spelled out our new family life philosophy of ministry. Uh, him and his wife were up there. And then we invited people to go into breakout groups. And our whole thrust of the night was to encourage and to equip parents. And so so many events like that, even events like this, you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. You're lucky if you get one drop of information. And so we wanted parents. I, I, I told our breakout speaker, I said, hey, tell parents to do, do this one thing. If you can do this one thing, then, then the whole night has been worth it. And we launched a, a heavy team of encouragement and youth leaders. So I'm, I am the lead parent. I have two boys. Anyway, uh, we wanted people to feel encouraged and equipped that they can do this. And so as the night uh, ended, we gave every parent, like it was a $5 Starbucks card, and then we gave them a, a coupon for a free book from our resource center. And so I understand that this, this doesn't translate, uh, may not translate into your environment and where you're at, but you can contextualize it because the results from this group of people have been incredible. We're talking about doing it not just once a year now, but twice a year. Uh, so parents can really be equipped and encouraged. And it doesn't stop there for us. We're having nights on the regular uh, that we're calling Date Nights for Parents, where they drop their kids off at a church and then they go on a date. Like That's how we want to partner with parents. We want husbands and wives to invest in their relationships. We want single moms to see a resource and support it. We want families to be stronger because healthy families make for strong churches. And so this event that we did, um, and Pastor Brian's already talked about partnering with parents, but this event that we did, um, I want to make it available to you guys. And so um, what I've, our media director's done, I've asked for his permission, he's graciously given me all the materials from that night. So we have all the graphics, we have the design files, we have some videos that can give you an idea of how to promote the event. Uh, it's my desire uh, to for you to be able to take what we've done and contextualize it to use in your environment if it's something that you're interested in. So I have a huge folder. It's in my Dropbox with all that stuff in it. So if you guys, if it's something that you think that you'd like to do in your church, maybe it's something that you'd just like to take a look at and see if it's something you can you can use, um, just get a hold of me after uh, we break this morning. Just give me an email address, and I'd love to kind of help you layer and layer the video files if you want to do it inside. Uh, but I, we have the Facebook stuff. If anybody can use it, be happy. Parent worship would be right down the road. But uh, my heart is to see the body of Christ be set up in here. And some of you are in this context and in an environment where you are really fascinated to do what is necessary. So do all the things at once. So uh, 
That's a great, what I really appreciate about the event is the, the breakouts that um, your, your lead pastor and your executive pastor both led when there's breakouts. Not, and that's what culture is about. It's not just that, that it wasn't just Pastor Michael throwing the event together and the lead pastor said, hey, good job, way to go. They, they were a part of that, establishing that culture. It helps that you're a young pastor who has kids <laughs> in your program as well, but it was absolutely a great thing. Hey, we have about, we have about five minutes left. Um, we'll have to just, uh, if you have any questions for me and Michael, if you have any, also any, any thoughts or input on maybe, maybe you're doing something a- amazing that's really been really successful at pulling the listeners to your church that you'd like to share, we can do that as well. Probably because I don't think I, I yeah, might, yeah, I wouldn't, I was skin behind, so I said no, no, that's, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure I, I thought we missed okay. it. And then the other one I missed uh, was a top priority, but getting clear on what takes plan takes time. Priority. Priority. Yeah, but you see, I thought I was supposed to be saying that. I was writing notes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, my, my email is on there. Okay, if, you want, if you want to email me, I can, I can send email you that. Michael's emails on that front page too, so he emails is a is a big deal um, resource I'd say too. Yeah. Pulling the fill on this blank, fair enough. <laughs> Any other thoughts, questions, or, or input? Let me, let me go ahead and, and just pray for everyone, and then we can um, head off lots of to lunch. Well, we just thank you that, that you have called us um, to serve you. Well, we thank you that you've given us a, a passion, a burden, um, not just for kids, but for families. And well, I just pr- pray for everyone in this room that they would, would feel encouraged, to feel uplifted this weekend, Lord. I pray, Lord, that, that the things that you want us to, to take home, the action steps that you need us to that you want us to take, help us to do that, God. And God, I just pray that you would just bless these people in this room, uh, provide all the resources that they need. Lord, I pray for, for new volunteers. I pray for, for new resources. I pray for just a, a new sense, a sense of energy and passion, Lord. 